electrolysis. So a galvanic cell produces current when a redox reaction of, uh, proceeds spontaneously. A similar apparatus, an electrolytic cell, uses electrical energy to produce chemical change. So this process is what we call electrolysis. It involves forcing a current to a cell to produce a chemical change for which the cell potential is negative. That current, which is electrical work, causes an otherwise non-spontaneous chemical reaction to occur. Electrolysis has great practical importance, for example, charging a, charging a battery or producing aluminum metal and chrome plating an object are all done electrotically. So in this figure, it illustrates the difference between a galvanic cell and an electrolytic cell. So in the first uh, figure A is a galvanic cell and it runs spontaneously to produce 1.1 volt, while figure B shows an external power source forcing electrons through the cell in the opposite direction. So this requires an external potential greater than 1.1 volt, which must be applied in opposition to the natural cell potential. So this device is an electrolytic cell. Notice that since electron flow is opposite in the two cases, the anode and cathode are reverse between A and B. Also, ion flow through the salt bridge is opposite in two cells. So now, we will consider the stoichiometry of electrolytic processes. That is how much chemical change occurs with the flow of a given current for a specific a specified time. Okay, so we have example. Determine the mass of copper that is plated out when a current of 10 ampere wherein 1 ampere is equivalent to 1 column of charge per second, have passed for 30 minutes through a solution containing copper to flat. So plating means depositing the neutral metal on the electrode by reducing the metal ions in solution. So in this case, each copper ion is requires two electrons to become an atom of copper metal of this reaction. So this reduction process will occur at the cathode of the electrolytic cell. So let's solve. So first, let's uh, to solve this stereochemistry problem, we need the following steps. First, the current and time. So in our um, problem, the current is 10 ampere. And the time given is 30 minutes. Next, we have to identify the quantity of charge in columns. So the symbol for charge is Q. And we know that the unit for charge is column. So next, number of moles of electrons. So we have this um, number of moles to require to carry one, um, uh, okay, so, for one mole, 
of electrons, it has a charge of 94,000 or uh, 96, sorry, 96,485 column. Again, for every one mole of electrons, it has a 96,485 column. So since it is an electron, suppose that this is a uh, electrical, uh, negatively charged. Okay. So next step is the number of moles of copper. And lastly is the mass in grams of copper. So the amount of the chemical change occur in this reaction is based on the number of mass or number of grams. Okay, so let's have our first step. So to obtain the co total columns of charge pass into the copper or solution at a cathode. Column of charge or Q is equivalent to current times time. But take note, time must be in seconds. Because current of 10 ampere is equivalent to 10 column per seconds times time of 30 minutes. And to eliminate minutes, let's convert this into seconds. That which is 60 seconds per one minute. Therefore, the charge, the quantity of charge in column is 1.8 times 10 raised to 4 column. Now, let's proceed to the second step. This is our first step and second step is to calculate the number of moles of electrons to carry this amount of charge, okay? So we're going to multiply 1.8 times 10 raised to 4 column by this um, ratio where in one mole of electrons is equivalent or has a charge of 96,485 column. Therefore, the number of electrons is 1.87 times 10 raised to negative 1 mole of electrons. Okay, so let's have our third step, which is to identify the amount of moles in copper. So each copper 2 plus ions requires two electrons. Okay, so I have forgot to put the charge for the copper, which is given in the reaction or in the equation. So we have copper 2 plus. So meaning it requires two electrons to become a copper atom. So thus, each mole of electrons produce one half mole of copper metal. So 1.87 times 10 raised to negative one mole of electrons 
we're going to multiply this by, I have said, 1 mole of copper needs 2 mole of electrons. So we can cancel now the unit for mole of electrons. Therefore, the mole for copper is equal to 9.37 times 10 is a negative 1 a negative 2 mole of copper okay so lastly we can solve now for the amount of chemical reaction which is the mass of the copper so to solve this the amount of copper should be multiplied by by this uh, rate wherein in every one mole of copper there is 63.5486 gram Therefore, the mass of copper is 5.94 grams. Okay. So, meaning in this um, process of electrolysis, when a 10 ampere of current pass through, Within 30 minutes, a chemical change of 5.94 grams of copper will produce. So now, let's have you check your understanding. So the electrolysis of an aqueous solution of sodium chloride has an overall equation of this. So during the electrolysis of 0 0.228 mole of electrons pass through the cell, compute for the electrons, does it represent? Number of columns, does it represent? And assuming 100% yield, what masses of hydrogen and chlorine are produced? So apply the concept of stoichiometry. Sorry, stoichiometry. Antok na ako.